I'm blending now with a palette knife. Um, you can use a brush to blend as well. There's something really exciting when you use a palette knife. I find I'm more brave just mixing these colors straight onto the canvas. They're really blending away there and picking up some of the lighter colors in the middle of the sky. And you can be quite inventive with the sky. You don't have to copy the photograph. I always like to use photographs as a reference, but not actually slavishly copy them. I like to interpret them and try to be creative and come up with my own ideas as well as sort of picking out bits from the photo as well so as you see there I'm blending in that gorgeous pink color there and it creates a lovely soft light on the horizon what I'm doing now is I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue from the top and painting it on the horizon as well blending it in with that pink to create a quite a nice atmospheric effect taking off the framing tape you can see I've got quite a nice straight line and what I'm doing now is I'm using quite a cold old blue here you can use a Prussian blue and I'm blending in with a little bit of grey as well against that wet horizon line still using the palette knife and blending so it all kind of blends into the distance there so you've got that line to kind of um, as a reference for the horizon but now what I'm doing is I'm pulling in the sort of beach area here where the shoreline is um, using a little bit more of the white paint with the blue there as it comes into the shore it gets a little bit lighter in places but obviously you've got that snowy white beach as well so I'm just blending away trying to cover the canvas here it's like buttering toast it's actually quite a nice it's just nice feeling to actually use a palette knife and not just with acrylics I also love painting in oils as well so I swiped a little bit of that that white at the bottom there it does look a little bit pearlescent I think it's the light from the um, light source that I'm using from above but it is a white titanium and I'm just put that into the water there and blending it also onto the beach there just blending away I will be picking up some other colors to gray it down here and there As you can see there, I've used a little bit of a magenta and I'm blending it wet and wet into the sea as well. And you can sort of really sculpt some of those rocks on the beach, which is quite nice. And the grasses, this is a little bit of Prussian blue here and I'm tapping it with the same palette knife and drawing with the tip of the knife to show the sort of land going off into the distance a little bit more and then blending with my fingertips to blur that horizon line. And it creates some lovely atmospheric effects. Still creating lots of texture here with the blue and the magenta and I'm using a touch of that blue and blending it into the damp paint in the middle of the sea there to create a little bit of depth and then I'm using scratching actually with the tip of the palette knife to create some marks in the water sort of texture waves etc and make them narrow as they go into the distance because it also creates depth so I'm quite pleased with the painting so far and I'm just lifting off now it's quite a nice technique you can do scrape off um, it's quite nice to do as a technique to create a little bit of light but also if you don't like something you can scrape off like this as well with a palette knife and I've scraped off and what I'm doing now is I'm adding a little bit more of a sort of buff detaining when you can use white here just to show the beach sort of going around a little bit here it was a little bit flat before still using that palette knife and look at that one swipe and it just creates creates 
um, you know, really nice effect there. And one thing as well to say that when you're cleaning your palette knife, just wipe it on an old rag or paper towel. You don't need to rinse it. That's one of the things I quite like when I'm using a palette knife. It's me it's less messier than using brushes sometimes. The other thing I quite like about it is, as you can see, I'm just picking up colour from that right hand side and painting it in the shoreline with the palette knife just tapping away creating those darks and as they go further up the beach they get smaller and a bit paler and as you can see I'm blending as well to sort of blur that away and that again creates depth and I'm just creating a lot more bigger marks more textured marks in the foreground to create depth as well so in this way you're creating a 3D painting but it's a it's quite an impressionistic almost slightly semi-abstract style Style, which I absolutely love um, because even though again as I said earlier I'm using the photograph as a reference I'm putting a lot of my own imagination creativity here so if you were to have a go at this painting you'll probably come up with something maybe a little bit different especially if you're using different colors so I'm using kind of like a raw sienna here but you could use yellow ochre and I'm sort of tapping it onto the wet paint and lifting off and you get all this lovely texture and the thicker the paint you get some really sort of 3d effects there as well literally an impasto effect so as you can see i'm just tapping away uh, maybe sometimes i might paint something and i decide to change it that's absolutely fine one great thing about acrylic painting is you can change things you can paint over the top and everything underneath because the paints are opaque will be covered so never sort of fear about experimenting or worried about ruining your painting um, when you're practicing painting it's all about experimentation and just seeing what happens finding your style almost never be too hard on yourself just have a go the fact that you're painting is the most important thing I tell myself that when I'm not doing any exercise, instead of spending an hour or two hours in the gym, even 20 minutes, it doesn't matter. It's better, better for me than nothing at all. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm pulling out some grasses with the tip of my palette knife there and just lifting up and you get sort of lovely colours underneath as well. It's a really nice technique. And I've created lots of that yummy sort of smudgy yellow on that snowy beach as well. This is a little bit of burnt umber, but you could use any dark here, any dark you fancy. And I'm printing with my palette knife um, some gra tall grasses, as you can see there in the foreground coming through that snow so just tapping or printing this you get some lovely thin lines So I'm just adding back a little bit of the white, you could use something like buff titanium, just to kind of smudge those in on the right hand side there. Just looking at the photograph, the snow is in between the grasses there, of course. And then just pulling that sort of dark that I've just lifted off onto these sort of foreground grasses. So I've decided to put a few more white blobs into the sky and into the sea. Um, just to create some more light in acrylic most times you work dark to light so you work with your darkest tonal values first and build up to lighter values so this is me working dark to light so I'm just going to blend now with my palette knife and just to create this light I'm just working and it's almost like a circular 
motion here to create some clouds in the sky, some cumulus clouds there. The painting has dried, so I'm not mixing any of the colours now underneath as I was previously. And uh, I'm just try trying to create some sort of bit more atmosphere really in the sky. It's quite a nice way of painting clouds as well, nice and loose. So I'm doing the same in the sort of ne really near the water's edge here. It doesn't really have this same light in the photograph, but I'm trying to create a little bit of drama here, telling a story almost. And obviously using lots of previous experience from painting for many years. So I'm sort of creating a lot more of light on the shoreline here using still using the palette knife and just painting there sort of wet on dry. So I've added some grasses there. I'm adding a bit more white to the water here just to create a lot, a lot of wave crashing into the shore, blending with my fingertips. But I felt that was overpowering a bit. And that's the wonderful thing about acrylics, which is what I said earlier. You can just paint over the top. Here I'm doing it wet in wet, but I could have waited it for it to dry and then I could do the same thing. But this has got a lot more of a sea feel about it by adding lots more of that cold blue in there and a little bit more of this white light paint in the foreground as well if you notice I'm my my um, palette knife is starting to dance around um, the canvas there trying to be a bit more expressive with the marks that I'm making I've added a little bit more light now on the horizon line with a touch of pink as well just to create a touch of interest there and a sort of an atmospheric feel about this painting but you can just keep trying things out that's the lovely thing about this um, you can't go wrong in the way that you can just have another go try something else um, I say to my students sometimes as well take photographs along the way because you may look back later and actually have preferred something that you did earlier and that's fine because you're learning so much about acrylic paints so I'm scraping off again here I mean I, my painting's been finished about three times but I'm just enjoying it so much just painting on with this palette knife and just really playing around with different ideas
So as you can see, acrylic painting is very forgiving. It's great if you're starting out in acrylic painting because you can, as I said, try different ideas, you know, learning from the different techniques. You can create some great textures as well. There's lots of different mediums out there as well that you can make, um, create special effects with the acrylics. That'll be for another day. What I'm doing now is I'm actually spattering with the white titanium. I've watered it down a little bit. It makes it easier to spatter with. Um, the thick acrylic paint does not come off easy off the brush. You usually get a great big blob right in the middle of your sky. Um, if you're worried about getting any marks in your sky, do mask out or use some paper towel to cover the sky. I'm spattering a little bit of brown with black and white here in the foreground. And I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of the raw sienna and I'm going to spatter that also in the foreground. So I'm adding a touch more of some white and I've used a little bit of pale blue in the sky as well. I felt my sky needed a little bit more colour almost to match this painting here and just putting a little bit more white on this beach going off into the distance there just scraping as I go. I've decided to put um, two L-shaped mounts around the um, painting just to see if I need to do any more because I could just paint this for hours and hours. I was having so much fun so I've just added a bit of white here and scraping some of the paint off just to kind of have some directional lines to lead your eye through but I think I'll leave it there for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.